Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. I'm Andrea. I'm Casey. And today we're going to tell you a little bit of a story of how I married a guy in a wheelchair. from one of the first videos we posted that I'm not originally originally from the US. I am from El Salvador. I was born and raised in El Salvador and coming to the US was actually my study abroad for college and we just ended up meeting in Texas. We just chose the same school. We actually met when I was playing wheelchair basketball down there uh, and Andrea was part of another program. I met him along with all of his other uh, teammates who also happened to use a wheelchair for one reason or another. So that was my first time, honestly, being exposed to uh, people that were independent, that were using a wheelchair for one reason or another, were full-time students and just had a whole life of their own. And just like naturally, just like anybody else, I had questions, you know, I was curious about uh, a lot of things, you know, and we get a lot of those questions now, which now they feel like second nature. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what really what we want to talk about in this video. You know, a few of the real things that have happened to us, questions that we've got, and some are funny, some are, you know, just honest questions. These people are curious. So some of the questions that I had, honestly, were really basic things from, can this guy drive? Um, how does he do his groceries? Where does he live? You know, and can he travel? Things like everybody yeah. else. And those are uh, questions that even, you know, general public, it's not just Andrea that, that didn't know. Um, but like people just aren't exposed to it as much. And so they don't know those things. And so a lot of it was, I, I had those questions. A lot of them I was up front with Casey and I said, so how do you do X, Y, and Z? But some of them were just actually just watching him hanging out, going on dates, and just letting things naturally flow. So, uh, just like I had questions, naturally my friends and family had a lot of questions because, you know, this this was the first time I was dating somebody like Casey, you know, in general. So, uh, when I called my mom, I remember when I told her and my dad first, uh, I'm dating this guy, and this is where he's from, this is what he does, you know, introducing him. And inside, I just remember, like, feeling, uh, how am I going to tell her? How is she going to react, you know, um, with this? So I remember I just said, I just got to tell him. So I said, this guy puts on the wheelchair basketball team. I remember that's how I introduced it first, you know. I was, like, very subtle. And she was like, wait, what is a wheelchair basketball team? And I'm like... <laughs> well, and I, at this time, too, like, Andrea was already comfortable enough with me that she was past that point of seeing the chair and seeing me as a person, which would be tough if you're trying to date me and, and not see me as a person. Right. Um, if you're but, always focusing on the chair. Right. But obviously her parents were not at that point no, yet. No, <clears throat> they had never seen you. And so uh, when I first told them, well, he uses a wheelchair to play wheelchair basketball. <laughs> and my mom's like, does he use a wheelchair the whole time? And then I'm like, yeah, so he actually can't walk. He actually can't walk. <laughs> <laughs> he, um... He was born with spina bifida, and you know, I was such a back on to, he's a great guy, I can't wait for you guys to meet him. And I could tell, you know, my hands were sweating because they were like, ah, uh, ah, uh, you know, like this is just not normal. And they actually, they actually told me that, you know, this is not normal, how can this be? And I'm happy for you that you, you found somebody that's a great guy, but are you, are you sure about this? Mm -hmm. I got a lot of that. And they had a lot of a lot of questions and, and preconceived notions too, mm -hmm. um, which I thought were pretty funny sometimes. They were never ill-willed. They were more of that um, culture dif cultural difference. And curiosity. And lack of exposure, you know, to having met anybody. Like I said, like just like it was new to me, just like it's new to a lot of people, it was. There was a lot like of backwards. questions. Yeah, mm -hmm. like do you have to help him shower? Do you have to help him get dressed, get dressed and things like that? Can he drive? Yeah. Can he have a job? And, mm -hmm. you know, just, just like I did too. I remember by my second, third month that we were officially boyfriend and girlfriend, <laughs> she said, can this guy even have kids, you know? And I'm yeah. like, mom, this is why you date someone because I'm not going to ask him right away. I'm going to figure that out as we uh, cultivate and build our relationship. And so it was, it was difficult. We remember, I think maybe you agree to like, it was about a year of us dating. It took a year where we finally stopped getting those questions questions about are you sure that you want to be with this guy are you sure you want to be in this relationship 
it just seems like a person in a wheelchair should be dating someone in a wheelchair. That's even something that my dad mentioned one time. It's not like we live in this, I don't know, I don't know what to call it, like, a, like this fantasy world where we think everything's normal. And obviously, for us, it's, a, it's normal. And we do things modified. We do adapted. go adapted. <laughs> yeah, we, we, go, we adapt and modify things as we go by. And as the relationship got more serious, and we were dating into our even second, third year. And my, my family and friends, oh, everybody saw, this is serious, you know. Like, mm-hmm. they're, they're happy. They're doing everything. Or it really shows that they're doing everything they want to do. So interestingly enough, it wasn't just Andrea's family who was having a hard time understanding our relationship, so to speak. Uh, I grew up in a small town uh, in southern Minnesota. So uh, because Andrea and I met in Texas, uh, my family had never met her before. And we had been dating about three or four months then. Only, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I, uh, we were getting close to uh, winter break, and Andrea had invited me down to El Salvador mm-hmm. um, to visit over winter break. Mm-hmm. And so without my family having met Andrea, uh, maybe my dad had talked to you on the phone a yeah. couple of times. Uh, I broke the news to them that I wouldn't be coming home for Christmas Mm -hmm. uh, because I was going to go meet her and her family in El Salvador. With that, there was definitely some questions. Um, It was the first time I was going to be outside the country kind of on my own. Mm -hmm. Um, And like I said, my dad hadn't met um, me me, or Andrea or Mm -hmm. any of her family or anything. My dad didn't want me to go and Mm -hmm. my whole family kind of really didn't want me to go. They thought it was too soon or it was going to be dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was an experience to kind of like for my first time kind of say, you know what, I I appreciate your, your, your concerns, (laughs) but I'm still doing this. Yes. Um, so looking back at it now, you know, it's, we're not complaining about this or we're not bitter about it anymore. It's just interesting to go through all of mm -hmm. this and, and it just goes to show that, you know, people can have questions, not only because you have a disability and you use a wheelchair, but I was a foreigner. So anything that's foreign, I think, is just natural to question. I I can remember when I was younger and didn't really understand this as much or wasn't as mature about it. Um, But when people would ask questions or stare or kind of do some stuff like that, you'd get... I'd get a little bit annoyed Annoyed. by it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you come to realize that people do that not because they are trying to be rude, but a lot of times it's just curiosity and... um, being uneducated Mm -hmm. and so a lot of times if you take the time to educate people Mm -hmm. their their eyes are opened and they realize things um and they're a lot more open so kind of more from my point of view i had preconceived notions about the past on what i was worried about as far as like girls accepting me or things i could talk about and um through our relationship as it grew i learned a lot about that as well Mm -hmm. that like really andrea accepted me really for who I was and didn't like ever judge me and I really love her about that um because there were things that I was just like well what if she what if she gets scared away about this or you know more personal thing that I didn't share with her at the beginning and and I was like every step it was like should I share this with her yet and then I would and then she'd be like okay we'll deal with it and then there'd be like another thing that I'm like she's definitely gonna run when I tell her this and then I would tell her and then she'd be like Oh, okay, we'll deal with it. It blew my mind how much she could see past the disability. It made me realize how much sometimes I may be focused on my disability too much. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, but with her love and and acceptance through and seeing me for me um, was really great. And I was really guarded at first, but as our relationship grew uh, and that trust grew, I was able to open up a lot more and and truly be myself. I think probably maybe for, for the first time in in my dating relationship history. (laughs) And, you know, I hope this is not coming across like cheesy or whatnot, but I think in my head, this is how relationships are. Everybody starts a little guarded. You're not really sure, you know, when to really be yourself or when to like kind of let your first fart (laughs) kind of thing. (laughs) And if that person's going to be okay with it or not. Not, I don't know if anybody farts or not, but you get my point. That's what I mean. So as you can see, our relationship has been quite quite the adventure, uh, and even the adapted adventure at some time, yeah. at, at times. Um, but to be honest, I don't think I would have it, or sh- I don't think Andre would have it any other way. No. The the struggles that we've both gone through and the experiences we've both gone through, mm-hmm. um, I think has made our relationship really strong and created a bond between us that yeah. uh, is special, you know, mm-hmm. and I, that's probably what a lot of people say about their relationships, mm-hmm. but I, I honestly and truly think what she and I have is something special. Um, and like I said, I wouldn't have it any other way. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you really like this video. 
comment down below. Maybe you've been in the same situation we're in. Maybe you um, are dating somebody that, who's a foreigner or you guys are not from the same country. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you're dating somebody who is using a wheelchair for one reason or another. What are some of the things that you guys have been gone through? We'd be really cur curious and interested to learn and see some of your stories as well. Uh, so we post new videos every Wednesday. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell so you can get notified. And we'll see you on the next Adapted Adventure.